Hey, and welcome back, or welcome, if this is your first time here. I'm Dara Swiger, and today you're gonna see that my kind of second phase of seed starting in the second half of March, where I started tomatoes and so many peppers, and I tried germination in a wet paper towel for Bells of Ireland and some pepper seeds. And you'll also get some updates on the peppers. Oh, I pot up some dahlias, do all kinds of things. Before I get into it though, I wanna give you updates I don't think I show in these videos. The Snapdragon seeds all died. I, I don't know what happened. I think that they were outside on a night that was too cold. And by outside, I mean in my garage, which is not heated or insulated, but with a light over them and the light doesn't have any heat. Um, behind me right now is my lilac. It's about to bloom. The hollyhocks that I tried in the paper towel rolls, they got way too dry. Hollyhocks love water and they can't get too dried out. And the thing about the paper towel rolls is that it's like all exposed dirt kind of and it doesn't keep its moisture very well unless you have them packed kind of tight together the way a seed pack would be all together and you keep the tray moist, which I did not do. So I let them dry out and most of the hollyhocks died. I transplanted the ones that made it into the little seed packs. Hollyhocks don't like to be transplanted from everything I've read because they have a very long tap root and I've trans <laughs> transplanted one several times. So we'll see. The one that's doing best has been transplanted several times and it's in a pot now that's um, a decomposable pot. So it should be able to work its way through when I plant it in the dirt. We'll see. I also have found that I could buy hollyhock plants from American Meadows and I might be able to from my local nursery. Um, the foxglove I killed all of. It stayed overnight in the garage when it got too cold. It was under 30, 37 and they all died. The next day they were all dead. So I'm probably gonna buy some foxglove plants and then let them like reseed themselves. Might also start some seeds later in the season to plant in the fall um, so that they'll come back in the spring. I think that's probably my best bet. Any seeds that I plant in the dirt so far have been dug up by squirrels. So it's kind of like I need to start things from seed and put them out. But as you'll see in this video, the hollyhock and the foxglove and the snapdragon are not indicative of my seed starting ability or health of my upcoming vegetable garden. So let's get right into starting all those vegetable seeds. So my lilac bush has so many buds on it. I have some Bells of Ireland seeds here and they have not germinated well for me before in the things I have tried this fall. So I just watched a video though where Nicole of Flower Hill Farm suggested getting a wet uh, paper towel, which I have, spreading them out folding it up, putting it in a Ziploc bag, and putting it in the fridge. So here they are in the plastic bag. I'm gonna write what they are. And today's date. Um, I need two hands to do this. Okay, so now we put them in the fridge. And my front bed tulips are actually getting some buds on them. So this is the first guy that came up and I don't know if the snow damaged it. See, it looks a little messed up, but that is a bud in there inside that leaf. And this guy has two buds. I'm so excited. The lavender, uh, this lavender is doing better than my other lavender plant. You can see my azaleas are twigs with buds on the end and my um, laurel or rhododendron is covered in buds. And today, at the garden store, my children convinced me, look, look at all these buds, I'm so excited. They convinced me to get a peony. So I have uh, bare root peonies that came this uh, winter and I did not get a chance to plant. So I'm gonna still plant those. Um, I thought uh, this is at least alive and I'm not sure if that will be, it needs to be watered. I just got it out of the car. So this is the seed starting mix. It started out as a brick and it's dissolving in the water. Just use four and a half gallons of warm water. It's a five gallon bucket. So we're starting seeds and we are planting this peony that I got at the local garden center. Isn't that so pretty? Made from renewable coconut core instead of peat moss, which is destroying the peat bogs. So we just add water and it becomes dirt. We're gonna see how the seeds do in this. Okay, so the, these are the seeds we're going to start today in order of absolutely must do to, if we get to it, that would be great. 
So West Virginia pea. These all need at least six to eight weeks. Sometimes they say 10 weeks. And we are about six weeks from our last frost right now. So Scotch bonnet red, those are peppers. And then we've got a Jedi a hybrid hot pepper, which is a jalapeno. Um, Bastion, which is a hybrid hot pepper, which is a poblano. Milkweed, which is here for the monarchs. The monarch caterpillar can only eat milkweed. So I got a pretty pink one from my local garden supply store. I wanna, I wanna put this um, with the wildflowers. Basil, which takes six to eight weeks. I already planted some cinnamon basil, but this is a sweet Italian. Uh, cherry tomatoes, sun gold, cherry tomatoes. Cherokee purple, heirloom. Amish paste, heirloom. I love that it says Amish paste OG. I assume that OG stands for something else, but I'm gonna think it's the original gangster. So I have some dahlia seeds from Swan Island dahlias. I also got some tubers, which I'm gonna pot up in a minute, but I'm gonna put these into my coconut core mix. It is super wet, so I have squeezed <laughs> as much out as I can. I think I added too much water. In the next one, I'll use way less water. These are actually some Chinese food takeout containers that came with lids. I punched some holes in the bottom. Are the bells that I put in the fridge for a week and then I took them out and I put them on top of the fridge but my fridge is like energy efficient <laughs> it's not warm on top of it so then I move them on top of the dryer and look at that that is a root trying to hold itself together I'm sorry buddy I'm gonna have to break you okay so I think this was a success I have a million sprouted bells of Ireland. When I've done this in seed trays, I've had zero germination. But now I have to detangle these little guys and put them in their little beds. Wish me luck. Okay, my very first daffodil. We planted these bulbs last fall and I was kind of worried nothing was gonna come up. This is another lasagna bed, but you can see now we've got, and we planted, uh, I got this at Lowe's the other day. It was $2, it's a little hyacinth. Look how cute. I love it. Just finished planting my tomatoes. I have sun gold and Amish paste and Cherokee purple and basil. And uh, based on what um, they said over in Roots and Refuge, I went ahead and put several seeds in each little cell because it said their tomatoes don't mind being handled and separated. So <laughs> if all the seeds germinate, I'm going to have way more tomatoes than I need. But I will separate them out um, when they grow up a little bit. So I'm going to take them inside and put them on the heat mat. This is my broccoli, looking better than ever. Today is uh, 325, so it's about 25 days old. Some are spindly because they weren't directly under the light. I just moved them out from the light. Those are my Bells of Ireland, uh, which I transplanted out of the paper towel about one day after transplant. And my only two Snapdragons that have come up so far uh, in a bunch of snapdragons. These snapdragons are planted March 1st. They have not budged. I really tried to get snapdragons. So I got my uh, Dahlia tuber order from, from Swan Island. And I also got some seeds. I think I already showed you planting those seeds. So let's, let's see what we got. I ordered five. And oh my gosh, it's such a cute little potato. Well, it says the name, oh, there's Cafe Olay. That's the expensive baby. So I'm gonna plant them into pots. I've done some reading and it sounds like a four to eight inch pots. Um, the eye facing up, we're gonna say that's the eye. Look sure like an eye to me. So let me show you my pot. I have several of these um, from when we bought the azaleas. Um, so I'm gonna fill that up with dirt put that baby in there and then take it inside so the soil stays warm. I've read everything from 60 to 70 degrees.
well, I've got the pots planted, but I could only read the label on, I could only read the label on two of them. And that was actually my two that I'm most excited about, Apple Blossom um, and Cafe Olé. We'll see how they do. So after just two days on the heat mat in my kitchen, I have 100% germination of my tomatoes. We don't yet have a grow light hanging up in here because we thought we'd have more time. I just took the grow light and I popped it on the Dahlia box and the seedling box. These are peppers, still haven't germinated, so their humidity lid is on them. So that's a setup on my kitchen counter. The toaster oven, a mixer. Wait, these are things we don't use every day. The heat mat, because this is the biggest space the heat mat could fit. And we're gonna hang the lights up here from these kitchen cabinets. Um, they're not great kitchen cabinets that are just particle boards. So I'm gonna hang the lights. Okay, these are my uh, Jedi jalapenos that I put in a wet washcloth to germinate. And you can see I've got a couple here that have got their little roots poking out. So I'm gonna go on and plant them. You can see here, these are the ones that I just planted straight. They're even further along in the germination. So I put these in the dirt. Um, these are the Jedi's and we've already got three popping up. So I'm gonna plant this guy over here. Boop, boop. He hopped out of his row. Okay. So I'm just gonna kind of poke him down. These are the Bastin peppers. You can see I have I hope you can tell they're very tiny. <laughs> I have one, two, three about to pop up. And then these are my dad's peppers that are um, Thai dragon chilies. And we've got, we've got three. We've got one, two, three. I don't know if that's, oh, no, four. And then this little guy, I don't think is a pepper at all he doesn't look like his friends. He's not in one of the rows I dug. So what I did is I did a row right at this halfway of the ones planted directly. And then the second half of the row, I'm gonna do the ones germinated in paper towels. Okay, and now these are my bastards, my papuanos um, that I germinated in paper towels. So I just took a wet paper towel, put it in the plastic bag and put the plastic bag on the heating mat three days ago. So the ones planted in the dirt have a little, were planted a few days before. These were paper toweled. <laughs> Look at that. They're germinating. So I'm going to go on and plant these in the row. You got to be careful because sometimes the root goes through the paper towel. Let's take that guy and take him over here. And this is the halfway point. I, I wetted the dirt so that I wouldn't have to water once I poke him in. There you go, little buddy. So we're gonna see if even though the other seedlings are further along, if these do better, worse, what they do. I was gonna do two rows of each one, but I realized that would be a freaking lot of peppers. <laughs> I don't need that many peppers. So we're planting them close and then I'm gonna pot them up I wasn't sure what my germination rate would be because I've never used, I never started seeds. So while we're over here, let's check out my tomatoes. I've propped up um, my light, my grow light, about an inch or two above the seed. The seedlings are growing up. These are my Amish paste. Uh, these are my sun gold cherry tomatoes. And this is basil. And this is my Cherokee purple. You see that? They're all doing really well. Way better than I expected. It makes the room look really dark. This is a bright kitchen, but um, look how good they're doing. That guy's a little wobbly. I think he might be a little close. Um, what I've done with a couple of these that are really, really close is I've taken it and just moved it away or moved it into a cell that had fewer 
pop up in. So that's an update on the seeds in March. Now we're almost up to date with where we are when you watch this. I've got one more video of the seed starting I did at the beginning of April. And then we're gonna start fortnightly garden updates at least once every two weeks. Um, updates, I'm uh, making my new beds coming up this coming week. I'm gonna have a video of all that. I'm gonna do a little tour of my seedlings and then it'll be time to plant them out. So as a reminder, I'm in zone seven, a 7b my last frost date is supposedly april 26th but last year there was a frost on may 10th so i'm probably waiting until that day and just um around may 5th i'm going to keep watching the 10-day forecast and see where we're at then it's very windy and cold so i'm gonna go inside